Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jushin Q, CEO of over at Titan Sports. Hey, today I'm here on Titan TV. Here on the takeover with my boys, Keelan Knight and Dwayne Sperry. This week, we got something a little special for y'all. We got a special guest coming in. Hey, 11 year veteran, my boy, Anthony Morrow. Right now, hey, he's been chilling all over, doing a couple different things outside the league. Now that he's been retired, hey, we're going to ask him some questions. We're going to dive in. Get his take on a lot of different things. We got a couple dope topics coming up for y'all. But hey, fellas, let's go ahead and tap in. Talk to me, Keelan. Wayne, how y'all feeling, bro? Man, G, it's a good episode because we got that, man. I'm big. And I just wanna I just wanna let him know I appreciate you, man, for being on the episode. And we about to get into it, man. We're gonna get some good topics today, man. So Yes, sir. I can't wait to hear this one. I'm super excited, man. It's time to introduce a very special guest. In 2004, he was North Carolina's best of basketball. He played four years starring at Georgia Tech, after which he signed to the Golden State Warriors because he went undrafted in 2008's draft. He was known as your favorite three-point sniper on 2K and in real life. I mean, like, he's played 11 strong years in the NBA, and now he's a lifestyle services engagement associate for the NBA, going for a couple different teams and helping out a couple of the NBA players. Hey, Anthony Morrow, welcome in, brother. What's happening, Tammy? Not much, man. How you feeling today? I'm doing great, man. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. For real. And I love- appreciate you, buddy. Nah, yes. I appreciate y'all college takes, bro. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And it was just a couple years. It was 10 of them. I love you, boy. You know I love you. <laughs> oh, yeah, nah, nah, nah. I said, oh, I'm going to say, I'm saying 11. Uh, we got 11 of them strong things in there for you. Like, yeah. ten, I mean, 10, 10, 10. So we got you. We got you, baby. How's uh, how's everything with the family? Everybody good? Everybody good, bro. Everybody's sleep now. I'm downstairs, man. Hey, bro, I done turned this into a studio, bro. So we just vibing. Make sure. Great, right, bro. You know how it goes. That's what I like to hear, bro. Well, let me introduce you to the fellas. This is Keelan and Dwayne. What's up, man? What's up, Ant? What's up, man? How you doing? And it's a pleasure to have you on the show, brother. And uh, first of all, I want to give you your flowers on being a tremendous NBA player, bro. I remember being back in Alabama watching you go crazy in the NBA. And it's a question that I got to ask you. But before I get into that, I just want to tell you about you being a 2K legend, I remember being back at home playing the game with different people, bro. When you was with the OKC Thunder, what I used to do, I would get KD and Westbrook checkers. I would drive to the hole, right? So, you know, 2K, you know, it's a it's a, it's a a video game. So, how I would get KD and Russ hot, I'm driving to the hole dunking on people. And what I would do, once they got hot, everybody, for some reason, would put me in the 2-3 zone. So, what I would do, I'd drive and kick with uh, KD and Russ. And I got two in the corner on the wing, just sniping that three ball, just going crazy. So I want to let you know, you want me a lot of money, gambling with my buddies in 2K. And you just made me make a lot of people quit. So I just want to give you your flowers, brothers, just, you know, just doing that. And question I got for you, man, when did you know, like, at what point in your life did you know you had what it takes to make it to the NBA, man? That's a question I get all the time, bro, real talk. Um, honestly. It was when I actually signed to go to Ukraine to play overseas. This is after college. You feel me? And this was, I knew I was going to, 
I was not going to get drafted, but I knew I was better than a lot of guys. You know what I'm saying? So you had a conversation with your agent or with your mama and daddy or the homies. they like, we know you better than them. You just got to get in the position to get that. People don't know that I had to play. I had to work out for Miami Summer League and Golden State Summer League just to make it to get an opportunity. And I had to destroy these guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I don't better than these guys. You know what I'm saying? I like, your staple is shooting threes. But my footwork and everything I was doing to score was get me in that position. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't understand that because they like, me you shoot threes. So I'm like, bro, y'all, the people that knew, y'all, like, Charlotte, they knew, like, hey, he playing against pros at 14. Shout out to my brother, Buster. His nickname Buster. Dormigo Crawford. And he was the guy that said he's going to play the NBA. And it was like, I might go overseas. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't look at it like that in terms of that. Because I was like, I got to go and do it. I never thought I couldn't play against them dudes. The first time I got into um, Nike camp and shit like that, it was like, okay, this dude ranked top four, top five. Okay, when I get against him. I'm showing. And it's not him. It's just everybody that's coming to watch it. Niggas going to the league, all kind of stuff. You feel me? And I'm like, I took that mentality to, okay, I'm going to go back to Charlotte and show everybody Charlotte when I got going. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about like, it's just that. Like, back then it was Rec League, um, YMCA, the park, and all that. I'm like, every day I wake up in the morning, that's what it is. I'm showing you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really, I just played against this dude, they said, from wherever he from. Okay, cool. I got off on I come back home. All right, cool. That's how that started that. You know what I'm saying? And when you talk about 2K, I know my 2K dude is better than me. <laughs> yeah. But I rock. And I'm cool with it. And I love it. You feel me? But it's cool. For sure. For sure. That's what's up. Dwayne, you had anything you want to ask before we get started? Yeah, man. Bro, I know who started. <laughs> oh, we start. Oh, we about to hop into this topic and see what you know Let's about what's go. going on right now. Let's go, bro. Yes, sir. I'm home, bro. I've been working all weekend, bro. Wife, you upset. I said, what, man? I said, baby, I got to do this. And I'm excited about it. So I'm glad that y'all got me on, man. I'm proud. Thank you. Appreciate it. Wayne, what was you saying? Yeah. But, um, no, thank you for coming to the show. First thing I want to ask you is, I read in the interview that Steph Curry said, you were the best high school player he's ever seen. So you being so, like, dominant in North Carolina, I'm a UNC fan. How did, like, Glyce UNC, Duke, NC State. How did they get you out of state? How did you end up with G Tech? I'll give you a real story real quick. I ain't going to go into all. Look, bro. Carolina was coming to my games every Saturday. Yeah. And Matt Darty was the coach. They fired him. And they stopped recruiting me because Roy Williams came. And J.R. Smith from Kansas had committed. We all knew. And I had my name up on JR. Because JR wasn't playing no defense, but I got off for him at Nike camp. And then when he committed to the Carolina, Coach Williams wasn't going to, like, cancel that. Like, he wasn't going to resent his scholarship. You feel me? So he was like, you can walk on. I'm like, I ain't walking on shit. Come straight in. And I'm going to play in the ACC just in case he go to North Carolina. And it's my brother. I love J JR. That's my bro. So when they did that and Coach Darty got fired and all that, you know, that's what happened. And um, <clears throat> I went on my visits to NC State, Tennessee, UNC, Charlotte. And you know, I just 
was on. Like I was like, I want to play in the ACC because I know I'm good enough to play there and compete at that level. You feel me? I wanted to go to Wake Forest. I think, you know, they recruited somebody else over me. So I had like a chip on my shoulder. I'm like, y'all think I'm like that? <laughs> y'all put all of them in front of me. So I'm like, all right, look. My mom loved Georgia Tech. I love Georgia Tech. Shout out to Coach Paul Ewing. And um, <clears throat> I went there because I was like, I need to get that. I want that. I got to play against them. Everybody. Shout out to Raymond Felton. Shout out to Sean May. Shout out to Rashawn McCants. All them guys that was there. Chris Paul. But I was there for all of that, bro. You feel me? And um, when I went to take, my mom was like, you sure you don't want to be hit? I was like, no, I don't want to be there. I want to go play against all of them. This is before the league. So I got to defend. I got to do everything. I got to show who I am in this element. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, the competitiveness with me, I'm like, they not working like me. They not doing it. I'm going to show them who I am. And I did that shit from 2006 until 2018. One about no money. One about no houses, one about business. It was just like, I'm better than you. But I couldn't put myself in the position to show you that. I'm gone. Every day of my life, every minute. You know what I'm saying? They asked me about the shit. I said, look, man, I ain't look. Basketball was my first girl. Oh, oh God, bro. You feel me? I'm like, that was my first girlfriend, basketball. And girls came late, of course, I got four kids, but it's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, four kids, yeah, man. That is what like, it is, man. Show these mother. I want to show them, like, it is what it is. Like, you not working like me. And I, like, I'm going off a little bit on another tangent. It was Michael Jordan. I love it, bro. Speak your truth. Yeah, I like Michael Jordan, my first. Like, he, like, my legend, my like he's my guy, but Kobe was the guy for me. Kobe Bryant was my Michael Jordan. Seeing him get drafted by the Hornets, shot the Bobby Fields, like I said, but uh, watching him from a high school player come up was the first time I've seen this. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Kevin Garnett. He's one of my favorite players ever. But Kobe was like, he was shooting guard. I was shooting guard. The same height, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, all that. And I saw him in this whole, everything he went through. You know what I'm saying? I saw his work ethic. And I actually got to play against him. And I actually got to talk to him at the end of his career. And Kobe literally told me, he was like, bro, because I was doing this shit where it's like, I played with Russell Westbrook. So Russ go a thousand miles per hour. He throw, if he passed the ball to you, I might catch it here, I might catch it here. I don't know when I'm catching. But I started doing drills while I catch it up top and start shooting. I was making shots at a high clip. And Kobe talked to me and said, hey, bro, how do you be doing that? I said, I had to work on it. I have my trainers work with me on that in the offseason and during the season. He said, that's the kind of shit I be talking about. You taking yourself somewhere else. You feel what I'm talking about? Different series. Bro, real shit. Kobe Bryant. This he was in the suit. We in OKC when I was playing for the Thunder. I'm telling the trainer to throw the ball high just so I can catch it. Cause Russ, he gonna be on this shit. <laughs> throw that shit when they open. You don't know where it's gonna come. <laughs> I had to train myself to do that because I'm playing with a Hall of Fame. Fuck with these people talking about about bro. That's my brother in general. But in general, I'm like, bro, like, I got to adjust. That's not just basketball. That's life. Bro, throwing that ball out, catching the shit out. Like, I think they just over-exaggerate on him. They get yeah, like... Always, yeah, I don't, I don't care about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's whatever it's going to be, but... 
it's just about the mentality that you got to have when you're at the highest form of anything you're doing in your profession. You got to adjust. You know what I mean? You got to change. You got to adjust. That's why I love Russ so much with everything he's doing and adjusting the way he's doing. He ain't never had to adjust. So now, the Lakers, you feel me? And now he's adjusting. That's why I've never been in no, I've never been in the business of having to talk to him about that. I just tell him I'm proud of you. That's what comes with it. Because they're going to say, you're making this, you're doing that. Nah, bro, we've been doing this since we was kids. You feel me? So lock in with it, bro. That's what it is. You got to adjust. You got to adjust to stay in that. Play 10 years. Should have played 15, I feel like. But at the same time, the game do what it does. You know what I'm saying? And Kobe said that. He was like, bro, I was doing that. And he was like, hey, do that. I had to do it. And Kobe, I I was like, don't tell me you, you, t- you talk Kobe. How to shoot out. It's like, nah. <laughs> we ain't gonna roll with that. We no. ain't gonna roll with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was like, that's what it is. He was like, keep going. He was like, I always respect you on your grind. And I never knew that. Because Kobe don't talk to nobody unless he respects something you do. Kevin Garnett, one of my top five guys, he was the same way. You gonna talk shit, you're gonna see what you really about. He liked that. You know what I'm saying? And these guys, I got posters up when I'm eight years old on my wall. You feel me? Really got to play against these. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, like Kevin Garnett, one of them guys like that, like every day of his life, he was in the gym. Like, you know, I got to see them, I got to see they work, I got to see um I got to see the grind. I got to see the family. I got to see the, you know what I'm saying? Like, that don't, that is different than just on the basketball court. That's like where you came from to where you at. You feel me? You know what I mean? Like, it's real shit, bro. And it's, it's real. All right, man. Y'all go ahead, man, because I keep talking. All good, baby. Hey, I'm here with the talk all night. Yo, bro. Man, I'm good. Nah, we, bro, we 10 minutes in and we already got a Kobe story, bro. That's love, man. That's <laughs> we need no, that, bro. I, got, I, got, I got a dope Kobe story. Y'all go ahead. Y'all do. I'm going to just answer shit. Right. Uh, no, 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 no. We going to come back. We going to get right. We going to get to that later. I, I, we going to get to that later. Don't even stress it. I thought I was gonna have to do this at the studio. I'm at the house now. Fuck. Oh yeah, we gonna we, yeah, we gonna get the studio in. We gonna get the <laughs> studio in. You don't have to sweat that, baby. So Christmas time is coming up. We're gonna be spending time with our families, but we also gonna be spending our time right around that TV watching these games. So first game uh starts off at twelve o'clock, of course. We got 76ers and the Knicks. So who you guys think now I mean gonna pull that out? Who you who you guys got time on you guys' slates? We got 76ers Knicks, we got Lakers Mavericks, Bucks Celtics, Grizzlies Warriors, Suns Nuggets. Fellas, let me know who y'all like. Wayne, talk to me. Uh, first game of the day, it's just like breakfast. But um, yeah, we got to try to stay in battle, man. We got the Knicks and we got the Sixers. And I'm going to roll with, personally, I'm going to go with the 76ers. You know, the Knicks are rolling right now. But right now, I got to go with arguably the most dominant big in the league right now, who averaged 33 and 10. Me, you know, no matter who's in the lineup, without Maxi, without Harden, this dude has been a mainstay. I know people question his health, but so far he's been living up to the bill. So, they're going to come down a little bit on this one. I got, I got, I got the six. I'm almost All right. And what you thinking? Me personally, I'm going to have to agree. Um, I'm going to keep the six. As long as Joel and B is healthy, He's unstoppable. Like, I I love, like, Tyrese Maxey, I love him. But I put him kind of in that, um, kind of in that category with, like, Jordan Poole. Like, you got to show me that you're going to turn into that Damian Litter, Stephen Curry, 
or even John Moran. Like something like that. But I know what I'm going to get out of the big dog. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be consistent to be around him. As long as Joel Embiid is healthy, I'm putting them in any game, any dog fight. Because you got to think, it got to be about dogs. You know what I'm saying? And as much as I play with Damon Portland, and I wanted him to be, I know what he's thinking. He's a loyal guy from Oakland. Shout out to him. But for him to be in a situation, in a playoff moment, like everybody looking at Brooklyn, and I say, I love Brooklyn. I love Katie. I love Kyrie. I love their bench. I love their bigs. But I'm like, it's somebody that's going to be an X factor that's going to come up by that. So you got to look at that. Christmas game, who? The Christmas game is going to be what it is. Win, lose, or draw. Playoffs. Seven times you got to see these people match. What we doing? It got to be somebody's going to come up out of that. So you don't think the Knicks had any dogs? The New York Knicks? Yeah, they're going against the Knicks. They got no dogs over there? Bro, why are you talking about them? That's my point. That that's who they playing. Bro, ain't nothing going on with them. I ain't even talking about them. <laughs> like, Julius Randle will have to have 50. Yo. Oh, bro. Like, you think it's about to be a slaughter fest? He said, I'm not even talking about them. Like, dang, like, you think it's like, they don't even. No. Not about oh, nothing. Anybody can win. I'm thinking about later. Okay, 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 okay. Like, it ain't about, it ain't about just them against, like, whoever. Like, Chris Day, like, that's whatever. Somebody. Come out later on in the season. Yeah, nah, it's not going to happen, bro. I'm telling you, the teams, we can talk about it later if y'all want to get into it. But I'm oh, not, nah, we going, this ain't your first time, first and last I'm, time on here, baby. Oh, bro, I swear. You know, this is not your first and last time on here. You know, you I know, know that. Oh, I'm just saying, it's, it's about the dogs you got. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I watch NBA games, bro, I look at who coming off the bench, who is the guys that's going to do the dirty work, and then who are the guys that have, like, Two superstars is gonna get it done. That's why I like the Celtics. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, they get into it on some shit like where they rock it, then that's what it is. KD and Kyrie, they gotta get another guy that's gonna be a monster that's gonna accept his role and gonna get it done. Oklahoma City, when they develop these guys and get that, they're gonna be back in the mix. You feel me? The Lakers ain't got, they old. And they injury prone. And I love them. I love Brown. I love AD. That's my brother. I play with him in Oklahoma. I mean, um, in a new ones. But if y'all don't get that done, you're never going to be a contender. They're like, Milwaukee is boring to watch. I say, they dog is durable. Giannis. So he, so he like in the Boston and uh, Milwaukee matchup then? When he healthy. Chris Middleton when he healthy. And they got the boy Malcolm Brogdon, all that. Like, I'm like, it's never. Do they have my brother? Nah, he had the Celtics now. Celtics, yeah. I'm like, look, bro, they got, do- they got dudes that's dogs. That's going to be able to be durable. That's what the playoffs and the finals come down to. The Warriors. They already got a championship pedigree. Talk shit about Draymond. This it is what it is with him. But it's always going to be there. It's real talk. You can't afford none of that. But it is what it is with him. I don't know. I think his time is up in, the, in about a year. You 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 go yeah, averaging but, that. You go averaging that single one more time, bro. bro. It don't matter, bro. It's a dude, it's, 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 it's the pedigree. He do stuff that they don't have. That don't come up on the score sheet. I be telling people about that. It's that's, real. that's a big thing, especially in the locker room and everything else like that. Yeah, bro. All that. I bet so, um, let's go ahead and let's jump. Who you got, Warriors and Grizzlies then? 
with Steph out, I don't think Steph is going to be back. So who, who you got over there? Steph ain't going to be back. If Jai's back, they got a real chance. It'll be a great game. He's cooking them. He's cooking them. I'm going to say, Wayne, what you think? Yeah, like I said, if Ja is back, I obviously have to go with the guy who's the best player on the court. I got to go with Ja. Yeah. If Jaron Jackson back, that, that even brings another different element on the defensive side. You know what I mean? Um, Golden State, they got they got a lot to figure out. You know, it's, It seemed like it's a lot going on between the management and, and the guys, the players downstairs, you know. Whether it's Wiseman, whether whether it's the young guys from make the one to play, getting get their shine is they, they gotta get theirs too, you know. And as much as the old the old dudes have done done their part and brought brought the legacy to what it is now, it's time like you said, it's time for the young dudes to come in and usher and, and get get theirs at the end of the day. So it seemed like it's a little dynamic. And now as they're fighting with that, I'm gonna go with uh, Memphis because they've been knocking on the door. Yeah. Ready to go. You know, like kicking it. that door. <laughs> That's a rip ball. So a lot of been a lot of players obviously that are playing on Christmas have been going crazy in the league, but there's a lot of players that are going crazy that nobody really talk about. So we're gonna tap into our top underrated players that we've I mean that we see in the league right now. Keely, who you got on your side? Man, the first one I'm gonna rock with, I gotta go with my I call him I call him Mr. Rollbound. Jared Adler with the pro for the Cleveland Cavaliers. That oh, Tim Duncan's it. nephew? That boy is like that. Check this out. Right now, he averaging 13 and 10, but what they don't talk about with Jerry Allen is that, for one, he's always available. He's always there. He's giving maximum effort. He has probably some of the most energy I've seen in the NBA player in a long time. He's always hustling. He's always scrapping for loose balls. He does all the dirty work, and I love that about him. And as well, when I don't know if y'all pay attention to how Cleveland plays on defense. They switch a lot. And when you switch a lot, you know, your big can get on guards and play on the perimeter. And Jerry Allen can hold his own and people don't really pay attention to that. And I love that about him, man. He's an all-star man. He just holds it down for the, for the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. And people just got to give him his credit. So pay attention to my guy, man, for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And the next guy I'm going to talk about is, uh, y'all know, the buggy getter for the Utah Jazz, Mr. Jordan Clark. He's a former Lakers guy. I love him. So y'all know when anybody is playing for the Lakers, Hey, my God, right now he's averaging 19.9 points per game, but I'm going to give him a 20 ball. So I'm going to go right up to 20 points per game. And we saw what he did last week against number one seed, the New Orleans Pelicans. He gave him 37 points, and he shot seven threes from deep. Like, Jordan Clarkson is a bucket. Now, he can't get more consistent. I can't attest to that. But when he's out there on the court, you better guard up because he has the ability to go for 50 at any given moment. Shout out to my boy John Carson. So those are the two guys that I'm gonna rock with as two of my most underrated players in the league right now, man. All right, but D, who you got? Yeah, man. This, this league at the end of the day is probably as talented as it's ever been. So a guy I'm gonna go with is Anthony Morris' former teammate, Bobby Portis. I feel like Bobby Portis is one of the most underrated dudes I've seen since he's been in college in Arkansas. At that, he was a dog. And he's really about it, you know what I mean? He'll bring that part. And what I love about him is he's average 14 and 10, but he's also, along with Brooke Lopez, an anchor of the defense. They play that drop coverage, so the bigs are super important. Obviously, you got 6'11 Giannis over there, but to have another 6'10, 6'11 guy who's just as durable, just as tough, it, it, it goes under under the rug, like you said, with Middleton, with Drew Holiday. But this guy, this guy coming off the bench, average 14 and 10, is major for the Bucks for the season. He could have went anywhere else, you know what I mean? Got a bigger bag, but he decided to stay here because he's a loyal dude and he loves to go up and he's going to have another major season. And the second guy I'm going to go with is a guy I've seen coming into his own now. He had high expectations for him coming out of Kentucky, but it's Malik Monk. Had a great season last year, but this year I've seen a big leap as far as playmaking. I knew he could shoot the ball, but this year we'll see him and De'Aaron they're taking turns now, you know what I mean? They're looking for each other. So that's that's what I really noticed so far early in this season is Malik, Malik is really good, man. Having 15 points, shooting, shooting lights out, and also making the right plays on, on offense and man. Shout out to Malik for getting it together. Uh, you definitely right on Bobby. I agree on that. He just needs to cut his hands. 
We good. Talk. I got my two. I got my two. Talk to me. Talk, talk, talk to me. <laughs> hey, the first guy I'm going to say, my brother with the Spurs jersey on, Keldon Johnson. Woo! Another Kentucky. Woo! I love him. I got three, actually. But I'm going to just do two. Nah, nah, give us all three. All right. I got Bones, Holland, and um, Denver. Denver. But Keldon Johnson, he like that. And you know we're in a generation now where it's like um, you don't know who's going to be what. Because everybody's a superstar on Instagram. But Keldon Johnson is nice. Holland. My boy Bones Howling is cold. I love him. I love his game. But I got Bold Bold. And I'm saying that because I don't know what tapped into this boy. But he on some baby and Giannis type shit. And I oh, oh, I'll tell you exactly what tapped into him. He hear all this talk. Y'all keep giving Victor. <laughs> he hear all this Think Victor about talk. He yeah, he talked about the draft. I'm telling you, the guy is um, he coming into his own. And Denver didn't know how to use him. And I think in Orlando, they've seen how they can just let him play. And now he's figuring that out. And that comes with a lot of stuff with young guys. You know what I mean? But I got my three. You know what I'm saying? I got Keldon Johnson. Shout out to the Spurs because I really like him. And, um, and they young, so I don't want to give all the young. You know, you don't know. I like that boy, uh, Ben Matherin from Indiana. <laughs> like this guy. You know what I mean? I'm like, they got their ceilings. Their ceilings is so high. You know what I mean? But like what I'm seeing with these guys that's been in the league, that's why I'm at with it. Keldon, Bones is younger, of course, and Bo is younger, but Bo Bo got the highest son out of all of them. Because he can without conscious. Like, he just hoping. Right. He ain't in no, you know, it's like, if they lose, they lose, they win, they win. But he might have 25 to 13 or something. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, he's not averaging that. But at the same time, it's like, in his mind, it's going there. His ceiling is way higher than a lot of these guys. In my That's a fact. Just what I've been watching. I watch basketball every day, bro. It's what it is. Nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Ooh, I had a couple of different guys that I feel like they need a little bit more shine and a little bit more love, but they're coming al- They're coming along. Um, I want to say my first guy was, I love how Devin Booker is. Like, everybody, I feel like he's underrated in the sense of superstar. That is my thing of everybody keeps asking, oh, well, he has to show me more. He has to show me a little bit more. It's like, come on, he's giving you 58 points. Like, what else do you want? Like, I don't understand. Like, I understand the finals flame out. I understand uh, all that, but I think he'll be able to bounce back from that. He'll be able to get back. Right now, he's definitely, I want to say he's averaging 29 or definitely 30. Might as well round that up. But he's definitely uh, lighting up the scoreboard. Definitely a hard one to deal with. Uh, I like the win that they got against Nola the other night. Definitely thought, didn't think that they were going to be able to contain Zion. And they were down by 20. But like I said, the leadership and the scoring of Devin Booker brought them back. And they were able to get the win by four. I respect it. I respect his game. And I respect what he's trying to do in the league. Um, another, I, y'all, y'all gonna kill me for this. The comments gonna kill me for this. Underrated, oh, underrated, oh, playing, man. We going Ben Simmons, bro. Yeah, we going Ben. He's on his way back. He's trying to figure it out. He's coming back. All oh, I see the pieces. I see it. I see it. And I feel like everybody's just expecting where he was at the Sixers. But he's going to try to turn into something different. He's going to try to mold it into something different. He's, gonna, he's on the way. I just feel like as an underrated player, like he's he's not getting his flowers of like the the actual progress he is making. I mean, now that Kyrie's in the back of the fold, he's averaging basically 25, KD averaging 30. All they need is really Ben to just actually get that 
He's back on the defensive end. Now he get that offensive piece back. They'll be back in the running. Oh, you listen. You just said underrated players. Yes, because y'all. Where do y'all, where do y'all think? Well, see how y'all looked at me? What do you think about Ben Simmons? <laughs> what do you oh, think man. about Ben Simmons? Hold on, 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 hold I love Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons was that guy coming out of LSU. I thought he was the next one. I thought he was that guy. But, well, you were, what, five, six years in the league and you still have to develop the jump shot? Like, come on, bro. 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 That's not his game. There's a lot of guys in there that can't shoot. Just because we got a sniper on here don't mean that we can. He'll tell you. Not everybody can pick up that strap. Not everybody okay. can pick up. Not everybody can be a sniper. Not everybody's that. Amy. I'm not. Superstars or even all stars that can't shoot. Giannis, boom! Whoa. Oh, Whoa. Giannis, Whoa. Whoa. straight up and down. Whoa. Anybody that takes ten seconds, Whoa. ten seconds to actually this shoot that free throw. This he made nineteen free throws in the finals and had fifty. He missed one free throw. Can what ben, performance? What's your average? Bro, can Ben Simmons do that? Oh God! Let let that be talking real right now. Ben can make knock him down when he needs to. Bro, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Mm -hmm. How we say? <laughs> Giannis made nineteen free throws, bro. With he took 50, ten seconds to make them. You take it all day. For fifty, nineteen free throws out of that fifty in the finals to win it. Can Ben Simmons do that? Come on, bro. Like, real shit. Do you, any of y'all on this call right now, bro? On I, this. I have faith in, just in case Ben watches. I he don't even want to go to the free throw line. He don't. That's because he want to dunk it on your head. You want to dunk it on your head. But you want to get it fast break. Or you want to do a nice little dunk. He want to he hit the hee hee. No, that's magic. That's nothing. <laughs> 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 you want to hit that. If. If he didn't want to dunk that ball because he thought it was going to get fouled and passed it when he was in Philly, you did not want to go to the free throw line. Even if you dunked on somebody. Come on, bro. We got to stop. It's real. Like, you got to look at it. It's real. So you, don't think it, you don't think his bounce back is anytime soon, or at least not, not this season. Conquer that free throw. He still can't make free throws. He's not going to ever be like a great shooter. But when it comes time, just like Shaq did back in the day, I got to make it when it matters because I want to win these championships. I'm not saying Giannis going to get championship like Shaq, but at the same time, I'm going to figure it out because it's my moment. Bro, scared of the moment. That's why he with KD and Kyrie. You could have did that with the best big man, in my opinion, in the league, with Joel. Nobody can stop Joel and you have to double team him. He's like the closest thing to Shaq I've ever seen in my life. You watch basketball since so I was dating. That's what I've been trying to tell these Real two, talk. but they've been arguing. I got, I got a question. I got a question. I got a question, Anthony. I got a question, Anthony. I got a question. So right now, if we go on most versatile big men in the league right now, who would you pick as 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 a versatile big right now in the NBA? Who would you pick right now? Like, like what's like, what's the most versatile big like, in the league? Like big, like centers. Yeah, center, power forward. Bro, I'm taking, I'm taking Joel, bro. Over Thank the Joker, over the Joker, over of the Joker. Course. Yeah. Every time. Tell yeah. me why, bro. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why. Want to hear, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to him. Talk to him. I tell you like this, bro. I'm gonna tell you something. Nikola Jokic, and I love him. I love his game. I think he's a legend. He's going to be an All-Famer, of course. He's an All-Star, all that. I don't think, and I love Draymond Green, can take him completely out of a series. He couldn't do that shit to Joel and me like he did that to Joker. Real talk, bro. Y'all saw it. We watched the playoffs. We watched oh, that happen. We watched it. You got a point, but don't you think it's kind of hard when you know, like when you play the, okay, if you're the Golden State Warriors last year, when you played Denver, no Jamal Murray, 
uh, Kevin Porter Jr. really wasn't. I don't even know if he was really playing or not. But no, the focal like, point, the focal point of the Denver Nuggets team was if you stop the Joker, you got him, right? But that's not going to happen if that was Philly in the West with Joel and B. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to happen in the basket. It's not going to happen. Like Joel and B okay. ain't letting none of that happen. Okay. He's okay. gonna back down like it's different mentalities, different games. Like bro, gonna step out, hit threes, mid range, hit you with the, you know what I'm saying, mid range, all that. It's not gonna happen. It, it's not like you can just fall back and just be a distributor. No, Joel on your ass, all possessions. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what it is. It's real. Okay. 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 What about this? Like, what, uh, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Okay. Okay. If Joe L B, if Joe L B got a game when he's cold, what other ways is he really impacting the game besides scoring the basketball? He, I, got I, 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 he, he can still distribute. He can't distribute like how Joker can. Okay. Okay. He's he gonna, in defense, he though. He gonna still demand a double team because okay. he was so. sixteen in the quarter. You know what I'm saying? He in the paint with it. He not even shooting threes. Once Shaq got on his ass, stop shooting threes. Stop being a. That's the difference between him and Carl Anthony Towns. Fact in the Fact. playoffs. I agree with that. I agree with that. What you feel? I agree with that. Bro, so, like I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay, with not that. though. Like he gonna be in there, but at the same time, bro, it's like, is he gonna um change the game on both sides of the ball? You talk about coming to paint. Joel, when he want to play defense, he liked it. Like, KD liked it. I'm not comparing them, but at the same time, it's like, when it matters, we're going to get to it. But, hey, but, hey, tell this out. We talking about a guy that had over 20 boards. He had 20 of Johnson, so I'm listening to him. He had, he, he had over 20 boards in one, like, in the first, what, the first half. He had, what? 20 rebounds? Like, respectfully oh against, respectfully, no disrespect to this man bro. or to this team, but it was against Mason Plumley, bro. You, Anthony, I told them this, I told them this earlier. You guys as NBA players, you guys get your schedules and you guys go through the schedule and they're superstars, the superstars and all-stars. They go through their schedule and they circle certain games. Hey, I can have fun on this game. I can have fun on this game. Or oh, I can get 30 on this game, or I can chill the hell out. If you go ahead and circle, oh, I played the Hornets. They have the worst record in the league, and there's not a big man down there that can guard me. I think I could go and have 40 and 27. You, you realize you just, why are you, I don't know. Like, you really dis discredited 40 and 27? Are we discrediting it? Are we are we just telling you this is what you're supposed to do against that? Don't forget the ten assists, Dwayne. Don't forget the ten assists to go along with it. Don't forget that. Offense. I'm, I'm just offense. saying that is what you're supposed to be doing against teams of that caliber. Well, Level oh, of competition matters. Listen, it's the thing. Bro can do that when he can relax. When you see somebody like Joel Embiid for seven games in the playoffs. You don't want to see bro like that. He, don't, he might have five assists and 45 and 12. It's going to happen. He's not going to stop. Bro will literally be like, I don't want to deal with this. I want to be a distributor. You can do that against the Orlando Magic or something. Can't do that against bro like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a different question. Dogs. I give. I give. I give. Like a dominant center lead towards guards. For sure. Yeah. For sure. It's not dominant centers, but if you are sent like Joel. You got a guard him in the three point line, and then it's like damn, it's mid range game. Then he got football. Then he go to the block. Then he can make plays if you double team. You know what I'm saying? That's why James went there. Hard. Okay. You had to go there. Like you need to go there. To have a dominant bitch so who can get off. James getting off this year, which is great. And James is a Hall of Famer. I love James. But at the same time, I'm just like, you see what that is. And that's what you have to do with your organization. You can't just be like, I'ma just do this, this, and this, and have this guy and he gonna stay forever. 
Like Carl Anthony Towns need to be in a whole different system. For mm -hmm. sure. So, you feel me? Because I always looked at him like one of the most talented people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. his mentality got to got to be in a different culture. Like Carl Anthony Towns need to be in Miami. Pat Riley. Inner Spokes. Jimmy Butler over there. Kyle Lowry. He got to be somewhere else. So it's like every day is this. It's not like it's supposed to be. Nah, ain't none of that shit, bro. Come here, we're doing the work every day. Because I'm going to turn you to a Hall of Fame. For sure. You feel what I'm talking about? For sure. In that element. See, my don't be thinking about that. I'm like, bro, there's so many people that wasn't in those elements. They even look, we looked up to. Like, Mike made the culture with Phil Jackson. He turned Scottie Pippen into Scottie Pippen. You feel true. me? True. Bro, that's true. Bro. It's, it's, that's true. I'm not saying nothing that's just making it. Like, I'm like, look, bro, I've been around this shit. When y'all see me on NBA TV, man, I'll be talking about this shit like this, too. I love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that next month, man. Go. Let's go. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a mentality, but it's the culture. You know what I'm saying? For sure. but like, I want Carl Anthony Towns to be somewhere else. Like, Anthony Edwards already like that. He's not where he need to be. How you feel about him? How you feel about him as a player I, right now, Anthony Edwards? I love him, man, but he, he a baby. And I've been knowing Ant-Man since he was younger. Uh -huh. Talking about FaceTime and like, he was at Georgia. You know, I know his people. And, you know, before he got drafted, I talked to him. And, um, we knew he was going top two, top three. I ain't, we didn't know he was going top one. This is early. But I knew he was going top three. So. And um, we talked just about life. Like, we didn't talk about necessarily about like, bro, you're going to be good on the court. It's just everything about everything else. But not nothing crazy, but just life. Like, I just want to make sure they, you know, good. Fair. For sure. Um. He's a perennial all-star. He has to get in a position where he can, um, the culture, like I just was talking about. The culture gotta be right. He's more yeah. than 8, 19 years old, bro. I tell people all the time when the Georgia State for four years, I needed all four to play 10 years in the league and I had to be a grown up. And I tell them, you gotta make sure that you got your stuff right and people around you right. To move forward with your career, you gotta play. It's a reason Kobe played twenty years. He what? He didn't grow up like that. He was in Italy. So, do you think the coaching has anything to do with it? Yeah, I mean it's coaching, but it's the culture of the organization. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, KG had to get up out of there, huh? That's why KG had to get up. Yeah, but I mean, he went to the playoffs a few times. I mean, he did what he was supposed to do, but look why he went to Boston. Danny Age. Right, right. I mean, look right. at what's going on, bro. It's, it's documented. I'm not saying nothing that didn't happen. Watching it. You know what I'm saying? But now, nah, Ant-Man will be straight. He, he a baby still. So, just, he at the stage where it's like, the, the different stages is stats, fame, and then win, um, win. So it's three stages of that shit. I like that you said that because I'm, I'm a stats guy too. Like you ain't going nowhere in the league without stats. You know what I mean? That's that's the it's, to me that's the most important thing, especially when the negotiation time is, is coming about. If your stats not there and your game not speaking for itself, you're not gonna go anywhere. In the league, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, but they gonna have stats. They gonna have fame. But then it's time to win. That's win. the first. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you look at how Kobe came in, it was like famous as a kid out of high school. And then it was like didn't play. And then it was all-star game. And then it was win. And then it was championships. And then it was legacy. Braun, the same shit. Allen Iverson coming in. Michael Jordan when he came. Like, all that shit. Magic Johnson. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's real shit. You feel me? Well, speaking of having the right pieces around you, bro, like, you want some 
spectacular teams across your time in the league, bro. Like, we looked at a couple of them, and we have a couple of questions for you, man. Uh, Keelan, actually, this is your question. I'll go ahead and pass it to you. Talk to him. So, man, I, I, I already told you, I'm going to put you on the spot. So, I got to ask, you done played with some guys. I've been following you your whole career. If you was a head coach, Name me your starting five out of all the guys you ever played with since you graced the NBA court. I got it here. I need your five. I need them. I need them. Yeah, the five. Played with him in Dallas. Um. Say one more time. Who the five? Dirk and Whiskey. Y'all get me? Facts. Like it. Like it. Whiskey at the five. We're going small ball. I like that. Um. At the one, I'm going stealth. See, I did my own work. I know a two guard you can throw out there. I'm just gonna see who you. Nah, I ain't gonna. Oh, me and Keelan got. Me and Keelan got. We wanna see who, who it is. I gotta see. Who I ain't gonna put me. All right, put me at the two. Cause I just. This fell. This fell. This fell. I ain't okay. mad at this. You the coach though. Let me just hold on. At the three, um, in a prime, Vince Carter. Play with Vince in uh, Jersey. And this way, we talking about prime. Fact, we got prime. But Vince in the three show. You know what? That's two and the four left. But listen, because of how basketball is now, and it's my brother. Putting KD at the four. That's Ooh. <laughs> I brought, I love it. I'll play I love it. it. His brother we played together for three years. And then I told you I got Dirk at the five. So we got Dirk at the five, KD at the four, then set the three. What's the other side? I said me. I'm taking me. I, I'm not letting I'm you off the hook. No. I, I can't let you off the hook on that. Yeah. Two. I, I, need, I need me a two. I need a valid two. You the head coach. Too many on the list. I'm not letting you off the hook. You the head coach. Yeah. Yeah. You the head coach. Yeah. Yeah. You the head coach. 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 Yeah. You the I know, I know what two guard he missed, man. I know what two guard he missed. That I play with. Oh, that you yes, play. Hey, we got, okay, okay, so. Hey, we got love for the two. So yeah. the two. Look at me. Okay, I'm going to put me in there anyway. Okay, go, go. Okay, no, hold on. Put y'all with me. At the two? I oh. got to go Monte Ellis. Nigga, go Monte Ellis. Monte was a killer. Oh, my God. Oh, bro, bro, we going. I'm going D Wade. I ain't played with him though. On the Bulls? Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Him. I'm going D Wade. No, nah, so, but he was at the end of his career. But in his prime, if that's my top five, for so, sure. Steph, D Wade, Prince, KD, and Dirk. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. Man, like, because I played with like Shaq. Like Braun, like I'm not putting them all in Kobe, but that I played with those are guys, bro. And I'm saying that on like um, I'm gonna tell y'all this before we move on. Um, everybody I named had a different type of work ethic, bro. Like shit I ain't never seen before. That I inserted into my workouts. You know what I mean? As an undrafted 10 year guy, it's like, bro, these guys, different. It's, it's a reason why they like this. It's other people like Chris Paul, of course, Kobe, of course, um, Russell Westbrook. Like, these people be doing different shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's a different situation. I'm like, bro, them. I watched Russ do his taxes in the in the kitchen in OKC <laughs> in the facility. You like I do it myself. I don't need nobody to do it. For me. I'm like, bro, you did like it's different. That's millions of dollars. Work out, bro. Oh, oh God, bro. Like it's not like he's. I'm telling you, like KD. Hey, man, I see my people doing it. All right, I'm going to do Hey, come over here with me. Let me see. His shit he doing with his people that's like, he's not Kevin Durant. He's just Kev. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different. 
bro. You know what I'm saying? They said, they told me stories about Kobe. I'm going to tell y'all something, man. And it's not like that. But I'm telling you, like, that's what that is. Like, that's what that is. You only see it when it worked on them. And I was around them guys. I'm still around them. And it's a different movement with that. It ain't just basketball, bro. This is like some other shit. And I'm like, I need that in my pedigree. I ain't gonna be like them legacy-wise Hall of Fame. I understand that. I ain't saying I'm not who I am. I know I'm where I'm at. But at the same time, it's different when you listen to the stories they tell. Because they're not just going to tell them stories on Instagram or on Facebook. You feel me? They really doing it. And now why does this nigga do his taxes? By himself. Right there in the kitchen in the facility. And he's sitting right there. I'm just eating an omelet. Bro sitting there doing it. I'm like, bro, why are you doing this? Like, I don't need nobody to count my money. You making the bro, making a million dollars a game. In my mind, I'm making that. Like, that's where it comes from with anything else. You know what I mean? I'm like, bro, like it ain't just basketball. Like when they try to persecute bro and all this and Talk shit about him and all that. I'm like, man, y'all don't understand what kind of man that man is. Sure. On you know, some other shit. <laughs> I was getting, like, they was on me for saying certain stuff that was, you know, protecting them, protecting me. I'm like, man, we got kids, families, all kind of shit. Like, you can't just be talking crazy to people. You know what I mean? Even though we do what we do, you will never be where we at. You know what I mean? And that's a big reason of really why we started this as well. Not the reason, but a big reason because we we do feel like that the players you guys do need a space where they're for you guys feel comfortable to release y'all something. Like I mean, like to release y'all energy, release y'all's thoughts, release like the real behind it. Maybe obviously, if you're not playing a certain way, that obviously that. The fans would like you to play. There might be a reason behind it. Might be a coaching adjustment. Might be anything, but we don't know. And it's like, we can't go on our platform just bashing y'all. Oh, you didn't play well. You didn't hit my parlay. You didn't do this, that, and that. But it's like, these guys really have real lives. Like, somebody's daughter might have gotten sick, and then he just can't get his game get his game to get together that night. That'd be the game he didn't. He missed the game with it. And you want him about that. But anything's possible out now. Like, Bro. They're crazy. They're, they're people too. Hey, I'm going to tell y'all something, bro, because I really rock with y'all and I love what y'all doing. And you know, Juice, you know I rock with you, bro. I love, bro. I rock with you, what y'all doing. I'm going to tell you something about what's going on. It's a little homie that just retired after like two years from the Dallas Mavericks and said that he was in the darkest place he ever been in his life. I saw that. Same homie. I saw, I think he played, no, I think he played, he, uh, was, well, he was wearing a Memphis jersey when the article came out. I played for Dallas, uh, Tyrell, uh, Terry. Facts, 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 facts. Right. Yeah, that's why I, didn't, I, didn't, I wanted to make sure I was talking no, about you. Real shit, bro. And it's not like, um, it's not like, you know, I talked, I said this in 2014. I said, man, this social media shit gonna get weird for people. I said, bro, because they're going to be on your ass. It's not like you not you can pick your phone up and call your mommy and see 13 mentions on some social media and shit. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that when I first came in the league. I started seeing it. Now I'm getting fined $10,000 because I'm telling you. Oh, excuse me. Hey, that's, that's, that's cool. But it's like, uh, <laughs> Hey, we go edit it, bro. No, I'm just saying that. I'm just tweeting that out. Like, I'm just saying that. 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 I'm just saying because people are disrespecting me when I'm 22, 23 years old, 24 years old, 
And it's like, y'all finding me for this, but y'all ain't got no programs for me to not do that. So now we see Kevin Love, DeMar DeRozan, and these guys speaking about mental health. I salute them dudes. You feel me? I love them for doing that. I got a mental health program in my neighborhood. Where I'm from in Charlotte is one of the worst neighborhoods literally ever in America at the time, in the 90s. You can look it up. You know what I'm saying? They said, you'll be dead by 20. I say I ain't gonna be dead by 20. I asked my mama, I'll be dead by 20. When you gotta ask your mama that kind of, bro, you know what I'm saying? I'm at 20, I'm at George Tech. It's like I made my, like, it's like I made it, like, as the president of America. Right. Nobody knows that. I didn't know y'all then. In my mind, I'm thinking, like, I made everything. Cousins, brothers, sisters, homies, hunger, dad. You at George Tech. Bro, I gotta take this shit wherever you gotta go. You feel me? It's real shit. So, like, um, you no, know, we still move forward with it. You know what I mean? But I appreciate y'all with everything. Well, that was bro, that was fire. But I definitely wanna thank you. That is all the time that we have today on this week's episode of the Takeover. We wanna thank you, Anthony. Thank you, our special, special guests, for coming through, chopping it up with us, talking some basketball, talking some real life things, some real player perspective things. It should, yeah, that really meant a lot to us coming on here and giving us your time and efforts. Fellas, is there anything you guys want to say? Oh, um, man, I just want to appreciate you, man, for your in depth answers, man. You know, you didn't have to do this. You took time out your day, so much other stuff. You could have had going on, but you took the time out to help me and the fellas continue to build what we got going on at Taco Sports. And I just want to give you your flowers once again for being a hell of a basketball player, my dog. Man. We just appreciate your time, man, for sure. Yeah, man. And appreciate you so much, dog. You understand how far this really means to me and my guys. Like, just, just a stepping stone we never would have even imagined. Like, having you on, honestly, like, this, this put a bunch of confidence in me, man. And, Really, 100% appreciate you, dog. Hey, man, I'm going to tell y'all, bro, straight up. Thank y'all for having me on, bro. And, um, I mean, anytime I get that, get the chance, I get the opportunity just to share any type of knowledge I have, bro, and bring it up, bro, and keep moving and share this with any of y'all, I'm always do it. You know, I appreciate y'all for real, man. I keep this going all night. I ain't tripping. <laughs> See, that's, that's all it's my dog, man. But that's all the time we do have on a takeover. Hey, signing <laughs> off. Talk to you guys <laughs> next week. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the takeover over on Tycho TV on YouTube. Follow us on Tycho Sports Media on Instagram. Hey, tap in with us. Join the family. Peace out. See y'all next time. Peace, guys. Appreciate y'all.